My name's Gord Beck. I'm McMaster University Library's map specialist, and my area of expertise is World War I cartography and aerial photography. People by nature, I think, are drawn to graphical images as opposed to things like text. So I think people in general are interested in maps. Pretty much everybody enjoys picking some map up and, and being able to see what a portion of the world is like that they may never visit. Myself, I've always been visual. I've had a number of uh, previous careers uh, in art or actually even as a carpentry apprentice where I was using blueprints. So looking at these visual um, materials like maps and, and air photos uh, comes second nature to me. The World War I collection here at McMaster originally uh, numbered about uh, 500 uh, trench maps and about 600 aerial photographs. Back about a half a dozen years ago we were able to acquire another 900 maps from the world's leading expert in uh, World War I military uh, cartography, Dr. Peter Chasseau of uh, Lewis, Sussex, England. Uh, we were able to do that with uh, a grant from the Heritage Ministry and it's made us the largest collection in Canada outside of the National Archives. And because we've digitized those maps, we are actually the largest presence in the world. Most of the maps uh, in recent years have been donated now that we have an online presence. Uh, anybody who happens to be clearing out their attic and finding their grandfather's maps uh, and if they want to donate them somewhere tend to stumble upon our website. So we've benefited greatly from that. And it always helps when you've got a good core collection that more and more maps keep coming to that because then you become the real center for any serious researchers to, uh, to visit. But having the online presence means you could be in Australia, uh, you could be in France. We even had many researchers from uh, London, England, where you have the British Museum and the British Library, uh, and they still come to us because of our presence on the web. Because of the resources that we have in the library, we quite often have classes actually come into our facility and there are a lot of assignments that are actually built around materials that we have in the room here. Basically any discipline that's interested in geography and how it's changed over time, whether you're a biologist looking at shoreline change or the change of a course of a river or whether you're an engineer doing an environmental assessment or whether you're a historian or a geographer, Practically everybody at some point or other is interested in seeing how an area of the world has changed over time. So that's why our historical collections are so important. We have aerial photographs, we have topographic maps, geology maps, soil maps, hydrographic charts, aeronautic charts. Um, we've got a wide variety of things here. So we are really now cross-disciplinary. We used to support mostly the geography faculty, but we now find we have um, classes from every discipline, including the health sciences. World War I maps definitely have an obvious link to certain uh, courses like uh, history or even literature where people are studying the work of the great World War I poets and writers. Um, but they also are a good uh, teaching tool for anybody who's learning new cartographic processes. People who are studying geographic information systems and learning how to create digital maps uh, quite often can start using our digital images of World War I maps by trying to embed things like latitude and longitude coordinates in these digital images of these historic maps, that can be a real challenge. It's quite easy sometimes to overlay one image in another in Google Earth if they're both from the modern day. But if you're trying to overlap two geographies of the same area that are separated by a hundred years and towns have disappeared, road networks have disappeared, it's much more challenging. So these are great problems to throw at the students so that they can hopefully encounter as many of the obstacles that they are going to encounter in the real world of cartography once they leave McMaster. Most people think history is history. Why do we need to know about it? Well, it's still part of our geography. It, it, it still clings to us today. So here at McMaster, um, because of our collection and because of the fact that most of it's digitized, 
We get regular requests from uh, firms in countries in Europe, uh, specifically France, where they're possibly going to construct a new shopping mall. And before they do so, they have uh, the feeling that there may have been trenches there from World War I. So they will acquire uh, trench, map, trench maps in digital format from us so that they can do proper archaeological research and environmental uh, assessment before they construct these new edifices. We, we never totally forget uh, uh, the past. It's still coming back and affecting us. Uh, in today's world. I'm continually amazed at the sheer scope of activity, the sheer scope of geography that was involved, um, the fact that it was happening on numerous fronts. I wish we had more material for some of those other fronts. They still remain a mystery for me. I could go on for decades continually to tr uh, trying to fill in the missing pieces of what took place in that war.